few minutes ago, I am mostly introverted, so um, I do like to share information. I do like to help people. Um, if I get deep into something, you may see me get emotional because that's what I do. I can't hide that. And uh, so we'll start with some fun stuff here, I hope. So this is, everybody needs a purpose in their life and every business needs a purpose. So I'm gonna circle back to this, this basic statement along the way. So Simon, and you'll see it over and over again, but there's the why and the how and the what. These are beliefs, behaviors, and results. Too often in business and in our lives, we talk about this. I want to make another 100 bucks. I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to live in that house. So we really are starting at the end, which is fine. But the next steps are to go backwards and ask and work on how you're going to get there and really why in the world do you even want that? Because if you passionately don't want it, it won't happen. And you'll spend your life, and these are just all life experiences I'm sharing, you'll spend your life or periods of your life frustrated and spinning in a spot. Because you will. <laughs> so. Mine over life, so if you had talked to me when I was 20-something, it wouldn't sound anything like this. You would hear that I got into business because I was broke and I needed to survive and I wanted to prove my mother wrong. That would have been it. Period. I know I don't need to go to college. I can make money, move out, and be on my own, and that's why I got into business. What I know 30 years later and through lots of trials and tribulations and making a lot and losing a lot, both emotionally, financially, all of it, it's really this. It really is to make a difference in other people's lives. And my passion happens to be the landscape and the snow industry, amongst other things, but that's my real passion. So thank you for helping me because this, all this stuff helps me get better. So this is a little video that you, is old. It's out of the 80s. Hope we have volume and, and it doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. but. Um, this has been used inside my company and at meetings very frequently, very frequently. They hear this at holiday events and it's just challenging. So this type of profile really challenges me. It's called just do it. You have a volume. Dadgummit, you're supposed to go far. All right, dadgummit, you're supposed to be somebody. You're supposed to make a difference with your life. What does a $500,000-a-year person do The $50,000-a-year person doesn't do? You look at the outside and study those two individuals, everything seems to be the same. They both are the same sex. They both are the same age. They have the same training, the same positions, the same contract, the same fringe benefits. They both are successful. They work hard. They're good family people, make tough commitments. But what's the difference? What does the $500,000 a year person do The $50,000 a year person doesn't do? He pays the price a little bit more. He works hard and a little bit more. He's loyal to the cut and a little bit more. He bleeds and a little bit more. He makes money and a little bit more. He saves money and a little bit more. If you want to win in these United States, you got to be tough and you can't quit. The last thing I'll talk to you about today in building this winning edge is, folks, if you want to win in business, you've got to be a leader. <laughs> Leadership is everything. You show me anything in these United States that win, I'll show you a leader at work. You show me a successful church, Boy Scout, troop, club, football team, business, I'll show you something uh, run by a leader. See, see, I, I thought at one time in my life you had to be smart to win. I used to have these smart people that dress so pretty and talk so pretty and use these big words. They just intimidated me. I said, Arch, you can't ever be that good. Why don't you just throw in the towel and go back and coach football for a living? And I found two things out about smart people. I think it's almost impossible for a smart person to win in business in America today. Because I find smart people spend their whole lifetime figuring things out. They're always trying to figure out an easier way and a quicker way. And another thing I found out about smart people is they just don't get around to doing nothing. 
And see, somebody like R. Williams, everybody said, well, he can't do it. And somebody like that can't do it. But he does it. See, folks, I want you to know almost everybody in America almost does enough to win. They almost get there. They almost are over the hump. They almost have it going. They almost in everything they do. Almost is a way of life to almost everybody in America. But the winners do it. What do they do? They do whatever it takes to get the job done. They do it and do it and do it and do it and do it until the job gets done. And then they talk about how great it is to be somebody they're proud of. We need leaders in America who can do it. If you want to become somebody, do it. If you want to go and business for yourself, do it. If you want to become financially independent, do it. I hear too much talk in these United States. Everybody can talk a good game. We need people in America who can do it. I go all over this country with A.L. Williams and I have people say, Art, you, you can count on me. Wonderful. Just do it. Art, I guarantee you this is my last stop. I'm going to win now. Super duper. Just do it. Art, if I could just have one good month and get the ball going, I know I can make it big. Super. Just do it. Art, if I could just pay off this debt, I could really go. Great. Just do it. Art, if I could just sell my house. Do it. Uh, but how's they selling? Do it anyway. Uh, art, I'm not making any money. What can I do? Y you just do it. Uh, do what, Art? You do it and do it and do it. Uh, art, I guarantee I'm going to win this contest. Super duper. Just do it. Uh, art, I'm over the hump now. Watch my smoke. Great. Just do it. Uh, art, I want to make it so bad I can taste it. What I do? Uh, you just do it. Or I'm a vice president now. Can I quit doing it? No. <laughs> or I don't know if I keep on keeping on. I'm really hurting what I do. You just do it. Do what, Art? You do it and do it and do it. Or all my life I want to be somebody important. Well, what do it then? Or I'm gonna save money so I don't have to go through this again. Great. Just do it. Or I don't feel like I've had enough training. What I do? You just do it. Uh, Art, my manager don't give me no help. What I do? You just do it. Uh, Art, you don't understand. I was Mr. Everything in my former company. You don't mean I, I have to start off down at the bottom and do it, do you? Yep, you really got to do it. <laughs> uh, Art, Art, what's the primary difference between winners and losers? The, win the winners do it. They do it and do it and do it and do it until the job gets done. And then they talk about how great it is to finally have achieved something you need. And how glad they are that they didn't quit like everybody else. And how wonderful it is to finally be somebody they're proud of and make a difference with their life. Thank you. Nineteen eighty seven, if you caught the banner up there in the corner. So that's not current. It's got nothing to do with politics or anything today, right? Pre internet. None of that stuff existed. For the old guys in the room, we know that this is only 10 or 12 years old, the ability to actually gather data like that. So leadership is, is everywhere, um, at all ages, all stages of business, and it does take action. And it takes a plan. And those of you in the room who are the leaders or leaders of a portion of your company, that's your job. Right, so the, the title of this is building a successful snow team, which means somebody is the leader. So I'll drill down and get into the details. If you read the, the quick little bio of what I'm gonna go through and so forth, I'm gonna show some pretty humbling beginning pictures because it did not look like this. It will look different, but it was relatively unprofessional and many other layers. I'll show you some stuff of the steps that I went through. I don't recommend all of them. I'm just saying they happened. And I'm not proud of all of them. I'm proud that I got through them. The, the just do it thing has run rampant in our, in our company now. And so what I, what my greater vision in life is to leave a legacy of action. So all that means is I'm never going to retire. I'm never going to sit still. 
I'm never gonna stop helping whoever will allow me to help them. And that's family and business and community and associations and so forth. Boiled down to the snow team, so that's this, and I won't, you guys can just have that. It's a lot of anything I share is on my website anyhow. So this purpose-driven life, and I won't give you this because I don't want everybody, until we're done, I don't want everybody reading while I'm trying to talk, but this vivid vision is also on my website, so if you don't want a paper version, you can find it there. That's an entire detailed plan for what everything looks and feels like inside the company written into the future. If you had read this one two or three years ago, it would say, and we will have a new facility that will feel and look like this. We now have a new facility that looks and feels like this. Written into the future, because that's where we're going. The past is stuff we learned from. The moment is what all we have with us right now. We're all going somewhere in our own business, whatever, whatever size snow team you want or don't want, that's every, every one of them is right if it's what you pick, right? So this thing lays out the belief and the behaviors and describes broken into areas of communication, uh, dashboards of communication. Um, so we'll share some of that as I go along. Oh no, we don't want that again. So these are kind of the I like to make it sound simple, but it's so not easy. There's only five steps, and we're gonna talk about, I'll show you different organizational charts I had along the way, um, and silly pictures. So most businesses in this world start with the owner and the team, which might be the owner and just the owner, might be the owner and one person, doesn't matter. <clears throat> like I said, when this was me, what I probably shared with everybody was we need to make money because I need to survive and prove my mom wrong. That I, don't, that I don't need to go to college, that I can make a living on my own. That probably would have been the story that I shared. It's very different 30 years later. At some point, the owner typically needs to decide, are they gonna be more sales or are they gonna be more operations? So part of this I'm gonna talk will be the whole business, we'll focus in on snow, but it's the same game. Some people are snow only. I could talk to you guys for an hour and share information on some of the most incredible people I've met around this country with gigantic snow only companies. Light years ahead of us. It's, that's another, I recommend ASCA meetings, I recommend the GA, I recommend hang out with these guys. Tom Kennedy's coming on October 30th. Tom is an incredible, first of all, Tom's, not that it matters, but the guy's forearm is like bigger than my life. He's just, He's, an, he's got an incredible business model. He's a great East Coast Jersey guy. So you figure out sales or operations, which one am I better at? Because you need to hire the other side. At some point as it grows, unless you're gonna play the role, somebody needs to really take a hold of the finance piece. A controller, a CFO, in the beginning, it's a bookkeeper. Maybe it always is a bookkeeper. I mean, I was bookkeeper way up until just three or four years ago. Bookkeeper level, fine. So it depends. Maybe that's the owner's skill set and you're trying to hire both of these things, operations and sales, because you want to be the finance team. But as it grows, there's only so much we can fit on our plates and do it right. Eventually, if you want to keep, and, and first of all, any one of these is cool. You pick the one you want, where you want to be, what you're happy with, where you want to go, and, and that's, that's the goal, that's the contentment. At some point, companies that continue to grow build leadership teams that then it's somewhat rule by committee, but there's three or four top pillars. Oh yeah, we're all getting that notification. That's a national notification that we're all, yeah, that we're all supposed to get. Um, so at some point, when you think of in this industry or think of any, I mean, there are lots of huge companies that the owners and aren't running, right? So it's led by a leadership team, board of directors, whatever you want to call it. So that was clearly what I had when I was doing that, was a board of directors and a finance, yeah, not quite. That's my parents' garage. That's my parents' driveway in Farmington Hills. God bless them, they're both past, but man, were they kind to me. That I did that in a neighborhood in Farmington Hills. Um, 
that's more like what it looks like now, even though that's somewhat outdated. Um, yes, that was me. That was my, that's also my parents' driveway. And like a $700 truck painted with an electric spray gun. So don't like it look like a refrigerator finish. Don't get too close. 1982. Same picture you saw, parents' driveway. This is 1985. This is more of the same kind of day. We did everything from put new engines in the trucks to let's just spray paint over the rust, nobody will notice. Right? These are, these are the plow trucks. So it's not that glamorous. These were the lawn crews. Me and Greg. We had two lawn crews. Wasn't that fancy. Nobody wore shirts. Didn't matter. Had this big pile of equipment. You can see some of these classics. The Dodge Dart and a 67, you know, if you're an equipment guy. Vander Mullen windmill, those things, those backpacks, when they first came out, weighed freaking 400 pounds. It was crazy. They're all metal. And that was my little toy that I built on the side. So that's how you finance your business when you're a kid and you want to move out of time. All right, I'm going to sell my baby. I'm going to buy that truck and build this trailer that's all scrap iron that I took out of a scrap yard, welded, had somebody teach me how to weld it, blah, blah, blah. All blingy and obnoxious. Yes, it was. It was the 80s. That was my office. Um, Greg is still a uh, employee. Employee number one. We were 18 years old. That was 40 years ago. Almost. But here's the technology. Running a business. Phone. Answering machine. Second answering machine. Those are carbon copy snow contracts. You write on one, carbon copy on the back. Lick them, stamp them, mail them. That was carved into the corner of my parents' basement. So they couldn't wait to get me out, right? So I bought a house up in West Bloomfield. Who cares what the house looked like? It came with that garage. The house was smaller. We ran the business out of there. And you could actually buy a computer by that. Imagine that. All you young people are like, really? No, come here. Yeah, I had to buy a computer. There's Troy again. I don't know what the shirtless theme is, but clearly I didn't have my shirt on a lot back then. So I should have bought stock, not the computer, because the three or $4,000 I borrowed to buy that computer, I wouldn't probably be talking to you guys right now. <laughs> 36 floppy disks to back it up. And that's, that's in the living room. That my, our house had that and a couch and Greg in one room and me in one room and that garage. When you bought a truck back then, it was two grand for the truck and 500 bucks for the plow. How's that been into today's business models, right? It doesn't. And I got a call, so that's 1988. I'm sitting on the green shag carpet I can't replace in that, because I don't have any money, in that little house that had a $550 a month house payment, and I had to split it with Greg. Fairlane Mall calls and says, can you plow, it's August, can you plow the snow? I had that piece of crap truck you just saw in my truck. They said, you're going to need six pickups, two five-yard roads, blah, blah, blah. It's 45 minutes from home. You need to have an hour and a half response time. You can buy. I said, yeah, I can do that. Figured it out. Just do it. And the org chart looked like this. So I owned the company. I did all the sales. I did all the ops, all the finance, all the HR. I acquired all the equipment. Greg and I worked on stuff together. I did have an admin slash bookkeeper. I ran Fairlane Mall, Greg ran the other sites in Farmington Hills, and I ran Fairlane Mall, and that was the model. No right, no wrong, other than that, bigger than that. I'm just here to share the steps I went through and some of the pain that went on. This was the fancy new salt truck that I was willing to do Fairlane Mall with. So that's, a, that's 1988, that's a 1974. Paid five grand for the truck. I couldn't afford the salter, so back in the day, FL Jersic, which Mark will remember, actually leased me a salter. A hydraulically leased me a salter on the back of that piece of crap. Um, but whatever, it came red, painted it blue. I used to paint everything in the driveway. That was my deal. And, uh, and away we went. This was high tech. Got a phone that year, 1800 bucks, 99 cents a minute. I dare any one of us to run our business on 99 cents a minute right now. It was like, okay, whatever, okay, see you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You, there was no, hey, man, what's going on? I, no. You look at that timer, and I used to push. Right? Sorry, bye. Like, you just didn't do it. It was crazy. The world, the world was different. But you still get it done. A lot of it hasn't changed. There were no containment plows then. Good point. You could talk more at night when we were out plowing. There were no containment plows. If you wanted, so we plowed with loaders with the bucket. If you wanted a containment plow, you welded something together. You fabricated your own stuff. It didn't exist. If you wanted a, I guess it's still true today. If you want a four-wheel drive, one-ton blazer, then you buy a blazer, chop the axles off on, put it under it, lift it up, paint it, put a new engine in it, you get one. Not recommending it, but we built everything. Um, we built truck after truck, ax buy this stuff, chop the axles, um, built that dump truck, built that uh, blah, 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 blah. Engine, side my shirt off again. I don't know what the deal was with people taking my picture either, because clearly nobody had a phone camera then either. So any picture, somebody actually went out of their way to take. <laughs> so I'm probably about uh, 28, 29. For anybody who knows Novi, this is Transex Drive and Novi Road. I rented the shop, had my crap everywhere. The trailer had done had a repaint. Whatever. We had X amount of crews. It was probably, I don't know, four lawn crews and 30 people doing snow. So at 29 years old, I bought that building. It looked like that on the inside. Since, so I'm 29 years old. I've got a one-year-old, I'm married, and I have 27, 30 some odd year-round employees. Nobody makes more than five bucks an hour. That was the wage. I'm not making 50 grand a year doing every possible thing on the org chart. These things are all scalable to today's dollars and I'll, and I'll get there. And here's the trick, I met some people I met some people who came into my life and said, we can help. And I spent money, and I spent time, and I got educated. We don't know what we don't know. If we don't come to things like this or seek out education outside of here, ASCA, SIMA, Vistage I'm going to mention later, um, we can't get any better. It's just impossible. Education and gaining knowledge is the key to everything. So get it in what you want. I wanted education in how to run a business, how to become a better leader. So we went on, we partied, I turned 30. I hired my dad, who was 71 at the time. He worked for me for 17 years, so he was 88 years old. Dad passed away a couple years ago at 94. Uh, I was just in Pearl Harbor last week. He was there 75 years ago, all kinds of cool stories. Um, but so I hired, Usually it would say Jim Anderson, for anybody who knows his name. I hired Jim, that was my first operations manager. Jim and I worked together for 22 years. And he helped create the first layers of systems. I walked away from operations. I mostly did sales in the company more than doubled. Real quick, right? We kept having fun, that's what we do. Um, yeah, there's some interesting stories inside there if you know these people. But, um, I mean, this guy, is now like 25 years old. That's his dad. Rich has worked with me since 1989. Rich E, 25 years old. I mean, lots of stuff has changed. The org chart looked more like this. So this was the next evolution. <clears throat> the highlighted part is, we were talking mostly snow, so this is the highlighted part of the way snow ran. This is the whole company. I'm still the owner. I'm still doing all the sales. A portion of the operations, anything to do with finance other than the bookkeeping, anything to do with HR other than the administration, and anything to do with buying or finding or acquiring equipment except some of the maintenance of it. Um, and there's 40 to 50 people in the winter. So that's 28 years ago. This is more like what a model looks like for us today. For a person, let's see if I can back up. Area manager, 
So in any one of our businesses, there's a, and he could be the owner, as you can see, could, whoever it is. The average, these are average numbers in today's ish dollars. Okay, on the next page. So first of all, the average snow company in this industry does just under $600,000 a year in revenue. That's average. You get north of a million, in the million, two million range, you'll squeeze into the top few hundred in the country. You get north of 10 million-ish, you'll be in the top 10. So it, it, it scales up fast. The top 10 are an elite from, from 10 or 15 million in snow up to 200 million or whatever Brightview's doing right now. Um, nonetheless, it all still scales. People can only do what people can do and be successful. So an area manager can manage somewhere in this amount of people, depending how, is it more sidewalk, is it more drive, what's your, what's your configuration? But that's a capacity. So our model bounces around, but for instance, 30 some odd people. Those could be service providers or they could be employees. They're gonna generate roughly that much revenue. Again, it could be a little bit less, could be a lot more. Is that a more, more salt? Is that more shoveling? Um, but that's just the case. In round math, it's $25,000, $30,000 a person. They can cover a 15 or 20 mile area effectively and they should cost you roughly four and a half percent of that number. 35, 40 grand. Again, can be less, can be more, shouldn't be dramatically far from that if you're averaging your stuff, okay? This is a key statement. When any of us have a complaint at I don't care where, at this building, at Outdoor Accents, at wherever, who do we ask to talk to? The manager. I want to talk, we might ask for the owner because there's a lot of owners in the room, that's what we do. But with a typical complaint is I want to talk to the manager. So what's the most important person in the entire company? The managers. It's not the owner, it's not the finance person, it's not the salesperson, it's not the mechanic, it's the managers. Be a good one, raise more of them, train more of them, treat them well, give them a challenge, tell them, celebrate when they're good, focus on management. If you are the manager, get educated, become a better manager, we all can get better at it, a lot better at it. I'm still getting way better at it, way better at it. Outside each one of our doors in our offices, there's not only our name, but there's a behavior we want to adopt that I make us all right outside our door. So if Steve was in my office and worked for me, I know Steve really well now, we've been working together 10 years, but I know what behavior he's admitted to start, that he wants to start adopting and changing. And I just try to help him. Mine would say, ask more questions. That's a behavior I need to get better at. I am hardwired to tell people what to do. That's not great. So I have to work on being the other way around. So that's where it's all at. It really is all at management in every part of life and in business. Yet, backing up, if you saw where we were at there, so we're, here we are, we got all this going on. I'm a big shot area manager, 30, 40 people, and I own the business. I got more titles than I know what to do with, and that's what I'm doing. That's a five-gallon bucket, and I'm doing a sidewalk. And Jim Anderson took that picture because that's his rearview mirror. So Jim, who was working for me, found me on a site and thought that was freaking hilarious. I'm like, well, just getting the job done, man. We're just, I'm not going to call somebody to come fix the thing. We missed a spot, so I'll do the sidewalk. All right, just do it. 
So those in my world were the early 90s, um, early 30s. We started to learn how to, st we had, or train as best we could to learn how to speak Spanish because it became more and more evident that that was going to be the case. Literally, for any of us who were in business in the 80s, that was not the case. Um, so you adapt. It's another leadership management learn to, to do a new thing. Um, and that was, this was being asked to be in SIMA. So we're member number 27 or something of SIMA as an early joiner to, I could tell you all kinds of John Allen stories from way back. And right about that time, by, not, by 2000, I joined Vistage. So it's not a Vistage commercial. Vistage is not cheap. Vistage is not for everyone. Vistage is a commitment. Nine meetings a year, all day. Nine mentoring sessions a year, two or three hours. Um, lots of growth and learning. Most of what I've learned or share about leadership or becoming better at anything is compliments of Vistage. If any of you have interest and want to try it out locally, just shoot me a text. I'll turn you on to the local Vistage map. You can, you can come attend a meeting and kind of see how the vibe is or if someone else you know. Lots of business owners, lots of CEOs of all size companies. Um, and then there's another layer and another layer. For instance, Matt Scott, who is now, uh, last few years, our director of operations, Matt is also in Vistage. Um, just not in the same group as me. So he can say stuff about me and I can say stuff about him because you got to have that. So education, education, education. Fast forward eight years, time for a bigger vision. So this is when I start learning this stuff. I've shared some of this with Dan because we've talked before, but I heard a speaker by the name of Cameron Harold. Cameron Harold wrote a book, Double Double, there'll be a book list later. Cameron Harold, by the time I met him, he was 40. He'd long since been retired from building and selling the business I'm gonna share with you. And he had a really cool presentation that I met through Vistage. So he was the operational genius that hooked up with the guy who invented 1-800-GOT-JUNK. 1-800-GOT-JUNK is a very labor simple business, just like all of ours. There's nothing elaborate about what any of us do. I consider myself a man with a shovel and a rake. Maybe they're pink, maybe they're not, whatever. But it's not that complicated what any of us do and neither was what he did. All about culture, all about creating a plan and a vision. The why, followed by the how, building teams, making people on your team the most important asset you spend your time and energy on. Not your equipment and not your customers, although that's all important. It's the people on your team. So he joined them, they were doing less than a million bucks in revenue. They built a plan. We're gonna double this thing every other year. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128 million dollars in revenue and sell it. From a podunk truck and trailer in Canada. So I'm gonna listen to this guy, right? And I'm gonna read his book and I'm gonna apply his stuff because it was simple, short, open to any page and say, I'm gonna do this paragraph. You don't have to read the book from front to back. Like for me, it really spoke to me. And it spoke to me for this reason. I have been designing and selling landscape, some of which ends up award-winning, compliments to the MGIA. Some of it doesn't, we don't tell you about those. Like the dead bushes out in front of here right now that are bugging me. But for any of us who have done that, and now we apply it to snow, and I'll show you how we apply it to snow. We are all visual learners. So I'm gonna yammer up here with you guys for hour, hour and a half. You're gonna remember more of these pictures than anything I said. That's just the way we work. So when we sell a landscape to somebody, we show up with a drawing and a picture, or we go meet with them and they, they pull up, used to be magazines, and now they pull up and then they house, and they, I want a fireplace like that, I want a patio that looks like this. It's all picture driven. All picture driven. So he's sharing this and he said, yeah, so I just went through this at home. You know, I'm building a home, I want a fireplace that looks like this. I meet with the, with the builder, I said, I want it to look like this. Eventually they draw it, they build specs and we put final dimensions and details on how to build the fireplace. But it didn't start with the final details. It didn't start with the result 
of the details. I believe I want a fireplace. I want it to look like this, right? So I'm sitting there going, oh my God. Like, so I've been talking to customers, I've been, and I have never talked to my team in pictures. Shame on me. So I'll stand up here in front of my team and whiteboard. They're all tuning out at different points, believe me. We all do. You guys are doing it. We all do it. When I leave that meeting, what we all know is, we all know this. When this is over, if everyone individually has to go say, has to remember what happened, they're all going to be different stories. That happens in our businesses too. And it happens with our customers when all we do is talk and we don't provide pictures. So I'll show you how fast this works. And, and here's just a, so I'm going to flip. I'm going to flip up about five different words. You start picturing this in your head. So I'm going to show you how weak words are versus how strong pictures are. So what do you see when I say mustache? A bunch of them. Old man. Long gray hair. Big nose. Uncombed. Anybody got any names? Because it's not me. Or, what? Einstein. Of course, you know this one. Or, if that picture had popped up, how fast would you know who I'm talking about? With or without his name. The pictures, it's just the way we work. So use it in our business. Use it to, to explain, why is social media so crazy anymore? Why is all this stuff? Pictures and video. Nobody reads anything anymore. Because nobody read anything before. <laughs> Except avid readers. How many of you read those 16-page snow contracts that have indemnification and subrogation and all kinds of stupid language in it that screw all of us? Eventually, we just sign them. Bad call. We can talk about that later. Right? Pictures work. Somebody called that a really nice brick job. I would call that a really nice brick job. But in, in, in your head, when I say, let's go do some brick work, everybody has a different picture. Unless you show them the picture, it's going to look like that when we're done. Now there's no f question, right? It's going to look like that. I would say snow, because whoever was doing this site thought they were done. That's 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday in front of a Best Buy. Sidewalks are, are clear. Handicaps, totally dangerous. I don't know what happened there, but I know what happened at my site. Because there's the Best Buy in the background, and there's my site. I would call that done. They called that done. Same word, same checkbox on their LMN or their log sheet or whatever. Is it done? I recommend you get before and after pictures of every site from every person every time they work on them. And there's plenty of software that do that today. So we have to keep painting pictures. Here's how rudimentary my pictures were in the beginning. That's a giant post-it note. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't be going too fast there. What are we doing? Stop. Ah! Troy doesn't know how to operate the computer. No surprise. They look like, the, it's just going to change. So they look like that. They were hand-drawn. That's literally cutting and pasting. Please stop right there. Okay. It's literally cutting and pasting if you saw that. Those are pictures cut out glued to the wall. And I'm going to try to back up just because it helped. So this was how I originally communicated what we were going to do that was different. Oh my goodness, Troy. Killing me. So we were going to, this is, well, I'll just stop there. Give up. Um, but it showed growth. It showed us going from no meetings to several meetings and organization and so forth. It showed Hot Pink Deicer, which is a different deal, but a product line of mine, very touching in a small area and then covering across the state in visual. All of those things have come true. And I would profess most of it because of the pictures. Nobody loses track of where they're going unless you let them and you stop pointing at the picture. And these, this, when I share later, is, is mostly words, but it describes a feeling. Another thing I learned in Vistage, SSK, that start, stop, and keep doing. So what my personal evaluations would look like inside my business is Steve and I would sit together once a year, 
we'd have some behavior with it's a little bit deeper I'm going to show you our core values but at the most I want three things that Steve wants to start doing stop doing and keep doing he gets to pick them I'm not going to tell him what to do not in the beginning this is actually, I'm an old day, Franklin day planner guy. That's why this is all chewed up. That's literally in the front of my day planner, wherever it is. It was written in January 2012. So I'm fast forwarding up to the future. And I'm going to expect my team to own their job descriptions. I'm going to expect people to, to grow in management skills due to my help. I'm going to become a better coach. I'm going to have one-to-one -one meetings with them. I'm not going to go, I don't have to talk to Andy because Dan, Andy reports to Dan, I'm not going to deal with it. So I got really touchy-feely, spent time, more time with the people. I'm going to focus on client retention, you can read the list. More importantly, I'm going to not allow the lack of execution, the reasons and excuses are all the same thing, don't use them. I'm going to stop providing so many solutions, I am super guilty of this. Just give the answer, hurry up and get going. Super guilty of that. That's great, gets it done fast, gets it done right, gets all kinds of good things in the moment. Creates an enabled human being who knows that all they have to do is talk to you to get the answer, they really don't have to do anything. Unless you tell them, right? Because you're just, that's what you do. And I'm guilty of that, right? I'm gonna keep having one-to-ones, I'm gonna keep looking for and hiring new people and working on ways to lead and grow the team as a servant leader. This is all shared information, this is all digital now, it's everywhere in the company. Core values, <clears throat> this is also part of a personal evaluation. So these are our core values. And Carl, if he works for me or with me, he gets to grade himself. And I don't like a fence rider, so there better not be a bunch down the middle. All right? So you guard, you know, you always, and these words are here for a reason, always do the right thing and treat everyone with respect. On and on. I want to make sure we talk about passion. This is this one's really, you get a bunch of dudes talking about passion, it's pretty interesting. It was almost as tumultuous when I painted everything pink and I had a bunch of guys go, I am not driving a truck with a pink plow. I'm like, well, then go work for Dan or something, because you are. And then all the reasons why, and it's worked out awesome. But the f gut reaction, really, right? But passion's the same thing. I don't want to tell, what do you mean passion? Passion is, is your heart really in it, right? Do you really like to do what you do? And if not, figure out what it is you really like to do because that will fill your heart and that will fill you up. And trust me, any older person in the room knows it goes by so fast. Don't spend your life doing something you hate doing. It's miserable. I've been there many different times. I know better now, right? So anyway, so that's how and, and all of this trickles through. Pur purpose and passion, fast forward. This is the ultimate goal for the growth of any business, including snow. You don't have to go there. You don't have to want to go there. But ultimately the key is the business isn't run. The decisions aren't made. Like this doesn't have to be in the office. And these people ultimately don't even need to be in the office. Consider board of directors and, and a bunch of stockholders in a publicly traded company. Somebody needs to work that plan and know, and know how to do whatever this is. And you, when you read this, it doesn't say, it doesn't have details. It's too many. It describes feelings and it describes the way things should be. And it's, that's their guiding goal. Then you, so after vision, you work on strategy and ultimately tactics. So if your vision was to become more educated and learn how to be a better leader, excuse me, or run a snow business, that would be your belief. You've all shown behavior because you've shown up at something like this or a national event. Now you gotta go make something happen with it, which Dan said was the hard part earlier, and it can be. But, Sticking your head in the sand and not learning that there's other stuff to learn, that's, that's even worse. Knowing it's there and trying to make ourselves better, that's what I believe. Just do it. So, same thing again. So, this is more what it looks like. There are four main pillars. Somebody in our line of work, somebody is all about human beings. 
Because I don't know if anybody's figured it out yet. What do we all sell? Time. Time of human beings. That's what we sell. Your shovel, my shovel, that tree, this tree, this, I don't care. We're selling quality human being time. So who's got the better quality human beings? That's the winner. That's the goal. And that's what we should be telling our customers. When they try to tell us, tell us what we are doing, what we are selling, it's not, it's not impolite to disagree. If it's done tastefully, Because same thing, same brick, same truck, same salt, same shovel, same parking lot. Only thing different is the human beings. So somebody should be really focused on this. And ultimately I have another role. I think there's a C level of this called the chief talent officer. And I really believe if I can get this big enough and they're in some big where it's just really devoted to that. Anyway. Sales and however many salespeople you need, finance and some bookkeepers, however it needs to be based on the size of the company. Operations, we believe, is two different functions. There's this is doing everything you do in the field to make money. Whatever that is, we're all doing roughly the same kind of stuff in different capacities. So that's somebody's job. This is somebody else's job. This is the support for them. At times, obviously, I've sat in every one of these seats, done it all. We have not perfected this. We're real close to this right now. Somebody needs to help the top man or woman who has all these people out there. That's a full-time job. The minute they get hung up figuring out how to get LinkedIn working right or why the damn computer doesn't work or why Susie is grumpy today, then the, all that goes to crap. And this is customer contact. This is a piece of, this is the face of the business when they call you. That's the face of the business when you fix their problem or create their solution. There are, there are and again, frequently this is done by, two, by one person. Right now we're a little muddy right here. My name sits partially in here and partially up here. It takes, again, all this takes growing to different sizes because it all takes money and at the end of the day you can't afford to do everything, right? But it is those steps. It can stay here forever. Most businesses in our line of work do. This is most. This is the higher, larger average somewhere in here. And that's the ones who get to the top. Which again, you can go anywhere. So this is my constant job, but I'm also always doing this, right? So just some local, I don't know, those aren't even that new anymore, but some pictures. Um, looks a little different than the technology looked back a while ago. And so since I'm here to talk about snow, this is more specifically what our snow world looks like right now. We're transparent, we're happy to share. I don't know what, I'll be honest, I don't know what my snow team's gonna look like in about six weeks, because just like everybody else in here, nobody knows how much work they have yet. And anybody who says they do is not being honest. We, none of us know exactly how much work unless we have chosen a small model, which is fine, some do. There's a great LinkedIn post uh, from Josh on the East Coast who sent out a LinkedIn post and said, we're done. Right? If you don't already have a proposal, we're done. Please don't call us. And he went on to say how much he's devoted to his equipment and his technology, and I can't take people that come on this late. We're right there. We are right there ourselves. This is the same time of year we do that. I'm done. I always try to leave a little one. You know, who knows that little one, but not much. You can't. You got to get hundreds of people ready to go. We've already started snow training. We've already started video insights. If you talk to my mechanics and they ask, when did you start or stop working on snow equipment? They would say never. 
right? They're all welcome to tour the site anytime. I had a taste and tour a couple weeks ago. We like to show off what everybody has built. This is not what I've built. Ultimately, my great success has been screwing up a whole bunch and learning from those screw ups while seeking new education because I could for pain. So director sits at the top. We break into a couple regional managers. Sometimes depending on how the workload there might be another one of these. The training manager is also an area manager but this person works snow nine ten months out of the year. So preseason, post seasons, creating training a few months out of the year helps with a little bit of random landscape, but it is that person's focus. And then who knows how big the teams are going to be depending, but that's pretty, that's pretty rough. Three salespeople. Technology has changed, right? You would not have seen um, a skid steer with a capacity of plowing several hundred thousand square feet. Again, back to my Fairlane Mall days in the 80s, those were seven and a half foot straight blades with no rubber edge on the top, because no, or it was a, it was a conveyor belt because they didn't even make rubber edges for the top. It was a regular loader. Once in a while, you'd find a guy who might try to weld up some stuff, like I said. Now, you put a guy in a skid steer, that thing gets to 13 feet, goes every which way. Daniels makes them, um, right, yada, yada. We happen to like Metal Plus. They support us. They paint my stuff pink before we buy it. I appreciate that. Douglas Dynamics does the same thing. Um, we give to them. They give to us. It's just the way the world works. So we could, this is kind of cool because you can see them coming and going, right? Um, but yeah, that's, that just didn't, and that's not a lot of snow, but it's heavy and wet, and that's a loading dock, and you guys know what you're looking at. It's, uh, that technology is much different. Follow us on, on LinkedIn, you'll see some of these videos. Um, but yeah, it's, trust me, it's changed a lot and the mechanics are busy. The stuff is being repaired and worked on and prepped constantly. So as you grow your snow team, somebody needs to be really focused on the human beings. No salt though, that's a bummer. Um, that's, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna see inside that building in a second. Um, Spend a lot of time on the humans. The humans ultimately, I don't mean that in any cold-hearted way, that's like a loving, like, the, I don't do any of this, right? The, the guy who's running the show doesn't do any of this. These are well-trained managers who over a three or five or seven or 10 year with me, maintain everything, organize everything, that's all, that's a summer video, that's all stuff sitting around waiting for winter. We are bigger in the winter than we are in the summer. I'm a friggin' equipment nut, and I like to have equipment ready when the winter comes here, so there's not much of our equipment works in the summer and in the winter, a lot of it is just exclusive to the winter. Technology in our industry. So I kind of picked up my phone early. Lots of things have changed. It's awesome. You don't have to use carbon copy. You don't have to stick it in the mail, wait days, although that was much better, actually. Slowed things down. Hey, it's in the mail. That actually meant something. Now that's just a big line of crap, right? It used to mean something. So these are some of the, oh, this is fast forwarding without me too. So this is some of the technologies we use. So this is a multiple cameras mounted on top of a vehicle. We do preseason inspections, drive the entire site. Um, Aaron is our IT guy who helps with some of this. So when we're done, we'll go to the next one here. When we're done, a site that big is videoed in just 10 or 15 minutes and very detailed. Value add for the client if they ever want to fix their parking lot or where they don't even need to go. They just Sorry. I'm going to talk to the IT guy because this should be pausing. Stop. Please don't go to the next one. Anyway, this is ISO and this is how we communicate to our clients. I'm back to pictures. So a snow site is highlighted, labeled, identified, measured. Who's the salesman? Is there a contract signed? 
one inch trigger, it's all inclusive. These are the hours of operation. That goes out with the bid. That, where is the stove gonna be piled? That becomes part of being signed off. This is part of the ISO 9000 stuff that we do. And I just, you don't have to be ISO. This is just a clear way to communicate with a picture. Um, no disagreement where we're gonna have giant snow piles. When these snow piles are in the lawn, you remind them that you're not fixing the lawn for free because you asked me to pile the snow in the lawn, not leave it on the parking lot. I'm not gonna fix the lawn for free unless you want me to build it in the contract. 10 or $15,000 worth of damage on a site like that after a heavy winter. So we communicate with the picture. Yes, there's some obnoxious contract this deep that goes along with it, but that never leaves. Customer sees that, that ends up loaded into LMN. So if all of you are the plow crew who go out there, absolutely no question on what we're supposed to do and where we're supposed to put the snow. Doesn't mean you're gonna do it the right way, but it means you have the best picture and the best tool to make it happen. So we take the preset videos, we use this stuff before, during, and after. Uh, we go back and re-video at the end of the year or review the videos and take pictures. Hey, we broke your curb here, we're gonna fix it. Hey, your lawn's effed up where you told us to put snow. It's gonna be $1,800 to fix it. You want us to fix it or not? That kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and we use technology to be maybe, I don't know. You, you guys can say how you feel about this when we post it, but so I hope none of your sites are next to here. But ours is water and all the other ones aren't, bottom line. So n these, nothing, nothing's been clear. These guys are doing donuts over here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so another way to use technology. That little video that Aaron shot for us after a perfect storm that cost whatever, that's what it cost. Use it and use it and reuse it. We use visuals inside our lawn department right now. So uh, Ryan helped convert. I always said if a, we would all respond to, we all respond to pictures better, right? So LMN is coming out with an update for LMN users. They will have emojis finally. Um, it's five, six, seven, eight years into the very first time I met him, I said, if you can't respond with a picture, nobody's gonna change. Numbers don't mean that much to people. You gotta respond with a picture. The minute we added that, so it doesn't exist yet. Ryan converted the data, my son. These are on, we have 19 screens like this around our building. Their scoreboards and their, what they're doing, what the whole, we're very transparent. You can see the whole company. Um, and in dollars. We did take the dollars off for this one, but and in dollars. So they have forecasted hours which is pink, and actual hours. The goal is to beat the hours you're supposed to spend on something. These are done daily, then weekly, then cumulatively. Right, so the yellow crew is kicking butt. They're all winning. This all funnels down to contributions to overhead and forecasts we built before the season. This, this visual and that tool alone let me put it in a percentage in the size of the business. Five to eight percent additional revenue to the bottom line in what they could control. So I'm back to management. Give the man, teach, train, grow the manager, snow or summer, it doesn't matter. Put them in control of what they can be in control of and thank them for it. And over time that turns into money or whatever your combination is. But Give them a goal. And again, these are cumulative, but if these, if this was the 10 or 12 lawns they're gonna cut today, you know, that one has three man hours and that one has 4.2 and that they, they're all incremental. So they know all day long if they're winning or losing and how they did for the day and then for the week and then for Same with fertilizers, same with snow, same with everything. Snow, we're struggling to get this timely because of the madness of staying up for 20 or 30 hours, it gets fuzzy but we're right there, we'll have it this winter. All the other departments have it. Construction jobs, everything. We've all made, we've made all this because, whatever, I speak for LMN, I like LMN, 
I don't use all of LMN. I don't use all of any one software. I use multitudes and we create stuff. The meeting earlier today, we created another one for another entity because I can't seem to find the ones that do what we want. But having goals, having targets, working with managers, everybody wants to know they're successful. Everybody. As a leader, it's usually a thankless job. Not many people say, thank you, great job. But that doesn't mean we don't do that for our managers or for our staff or for our clients, just because nobody did it for us. It really is that simple. It really is. I'm trying to stay on time. So everybody wants to know this one, right?